last time we wrote down the Euler Lagrange equation and we'll take up from there today. So the equation that I wrote last time was the following. So what we wrote was um, d over dt, the total time derivative of del t over del q alpha dot minus del t over del q alpha equals q alpha sorry equals q alpha okay where t is the kinetic energy the total kinetic energy of the system okay so you sum up over the kinetic energies of each, each individual particle of the system and that's what uh, gives you the total kinetic energy and because here you have derivatives involved with respect to q alpha and q alpha dot you clearly have to express your t not in terms of Cartesian coordinates but in, but in terms of generalized coordinates that's one thing okay second is um, you have q alpha on the right which uh, we wrote down explicitly last time as fi dot del del r i over um, del q del r i over del q alpha that's correct okay so uh, let's start from here let's assume now that the forces that are present in the uh, which are acting on your system they are all conservative forces meaning you can express those forces as the gradient of some scalar potential okay so you can write down a potential energy which will be a function of all the coordinates r1 r2 and so forth rn okay and you will be able to express the fi's as gradients of them so that's what we want to write down now so let's say we have conservative forces operating on the system okay So as I said, I can, if this is the case, then I will be able to assign a potential energy to the system, which will be a function of all these coordinates, okay? And then if I want to know the force on the ith particle, then I should take the gradient of the u, okay? or rather minus minus gradient of u r1 r n okay because i'm going to write it down several times i think i would prefer to define u of r okay so by this r i mean the entire set r1 r2 so and so forth r n so the force on the ith particle is the gradient of u so here you have to take the derivatives and derivatives with respect to which coordinates the coordinates of the ith particle okay that is what um, it is and explicitly what i mean to say is this so you take minus del over del xi of u minus del over del yi of u minus del by del zi of u okay that is what is the meaning of this gradient which i have written down here and uh, we can also write this as our in our uh, notation which we use as a replacement for gradient sometimes is i write it down as minus delta u again i write r instead of all the r's over delta r i okay that's just a notation so that's what your forces would be if your system was conservative. Okay. Now a simple exercise. Show that Q alpha, your generalized force Q alpha is um, I mean, instead of taking uh, the 
so here you have uh, gradients or derivatives involved with respect to ri and i'm um, saying that q alpha can be expressed as del u r over del q alpha that's a nice result minus okay so you can get the generalized force just by taking the derivative with respect to the respective coordinate alpha q alpha okay so let's see the proof is quite simple so you have f i dot del r i over del q alpha and if you sum over all the particles that is what your q alpha is right q of alpha now because your um, forces are conservative i can write down this f i by substituting this here so i put minus del u r or even better i just do away with the arguments of u you understand what that is minus del u over del r i dot del r i over del q alpha and you have sum over all of i and what is that that's just the derivative partial derivative of u with respect to q alpha because if you do a partial derivative of u with respect to q alpha that's what you're going to get right you'll, you'll uh, run the chain rule and this is will uh, because your u is expressed as functions of r okay so you'll take the partial derivative with respect to r and dot with del r i over del q alpha so that's what is minus delta u over del q alpha and this is what we are going to utilize in uh, in the next step so what i'll do is now is take this result which i have just shown and plug it in here okay let's see what will happen if i do that so i'll have a derivative of u with respect to q alpha what i'll do is i'll take to the left hand side and combine with this this also has a derivative with respect to q alpha and this will become t minus u and you'll be left with a zero on the right hand side okay so that's what you'll get so let's see so i get delta t over delta q alpha dot and you had d over dt minus delta over delta q alpha and as i said i'll bring t and i mean t was already here i'll bring the u from the right hand side to the left hand side and that's what you get okay now i define before i define let me say something else your u is a function of r's okay and you are your r's are going to be um functions of the q's the generalized coordinates okay which means when you go from r to q your u becomes a function of u of q alphas q's okay generalized coordinates it doesn't become a function of generalized velocities in this transformation velocities are not involved from going from q uh, r to q's okay which means derivative of u with respect to the generalized velocities is zero okay because this transformation from cartesian to generalized will not bring in uh, the generalized velocities which, so what i'm saying is delta u over delta q alpha dot is zero which means i can take this zero and put in here okay because i can always add a zero to the equation and nothing will change so i, I can write the above equation as d over dt delta of t minus u over del q alpha dot okay so because this piece delta u over delta q alpha dot is zero i can do this minus i bring this here again delta over delta q alpha t minus u this is equal to zero okay let's define this uh, quantity t minus u by l okay this is called the lagrangian of the system okay of the system because you have summed over all the particles so l is the difference of kinetic energy of the entire system minus the potential energy of the entire system and that quantity l is for the system okay so this is called the lagrangian of the system 
of the system. So I can write my Euler Lagrange equations as del L over del Q alpha dot minus del over del Q alpha L equals zero. Okay, let's see if I can bring in some color. Uh, color puck, I don't know where it is. Okay, never mind. No color for us. Usually people call this as all a Lagrange equation, but we will call the previous one also, which we were, which had a Q alpha on the right hand side, also as the all a Lagrange equation. Okay, that's a nice result. This gives the equations of motion of your system using uh, generalized coordinates. So here you have to express T and U both in terms of generalized coordinates because the derivatives involved are with respect to the generalized coordinates and velocities. Okay, let's see if I want to say something else here. Okay, what if not all the forces on which are acting on the particles are conservative? Let's say you have a situation where some of the forces are conservative and some others are not, okay? So each particle is acted upon by a force, a part of which is conservative, so you can assign a potential energy, and a part of which is not conservative, okay? If that is the case, it's clear what we can do. We go back to this uh, equation here, right? That was our starting point. And I split the Q alpha into two parts, one involving only the forces which are conservative, and I bring it to the left, as I did just now, so that I define a Lagrangian of the system involving the potential energy, okay, T minus U, and whatever forces are not conservative, I leave them behind on the right-hand side, okay? So your equation in that, um, in that case would become the following. So if, let's say, um, conservative and non-conservative forces are present together, are present together, or simultaneously, T-O-G-E-T-H-E-R, that's correct. Okay, in that case, as I said, I will take D-T, no, D over D-T, del T over del Q alpha dot, minus del T over del Q alpha equals Q alpha, okay? And as I said, I will uh, split the forces into two parts and take all the ones which, belong, uh, which can be obtained by the gradient of a potential to the left and I will get D over DT delta L over delta Q alpha dot minus delta T over delta Q alpha equals Q alpha. This Q alpha and that Q alpha are not same, okay? They are not same. I'm not creating a new notation. So here by, or maybe I should, maybe let's say prime, okay? So here Q primes are due to non-conservative forces. Okay, you can um, think of various situations in which you will have such a such a possibility. This is L. Okay, good. So now that we have equations of motion, let's get some uh, very simple examples to get uh, to get an understanding of how to work with these equations. And the simplest thing you can imagine is always a free particle. So imagine a free particle that's moving freely in space, no forces are acting. And let's see, we get our expected results. That is the Newton's laws. Uh, which will say that the acceleration in any of the directions, x, y, or z, will be zero, okay? So that's what the example we are going to take now. Okay, let's go to a new page. Example, a free particle.
okay if the particle is free then clearly the potential energy involved is zero okay there's only one particle and there are no forces on it it's free what's the kinetic energy kinetic energy is half m v square which is x dot square plus y dot square plus z dot square it's your kinetic energy and to plug in my equations of motion i should calculate my lagrangian first which is t minus u which is t in this case so i take the derivative with respect to the generalized coordinates which i will take the cartesian coordinates okay i will take the generalized coordinates to be the cartesian coordinates in this example later we can um, look at an example where we take some let's say um, spherical coordinates so what's del l over del x zero what is del l over del y that's also zero because there is no x or y here there are only the velocities okay and del l over del z that is also zero what is del l over del x dot del l over del x dot is m x dot right so if you take derivative of this you get m x dot the derivative of this with respect to x dot is zero derivative of this is zero okay these are partial derivatives del l over del y dot again m y dot and del l over del z dot this is a dot here is m z dot now i take the total time derivative of del l over del x dot all the three okay so d over dt delta l over delta x dot so i have to take the time the total time derivative of this which will be m x double dot Okay, and x dot x double dot is the acceleration in the direction x, and similarly you will get okay m y double dot when you take derivative with respect to uh, I mean the corresponding one here for y and similarly m z double dot. Okay, so what's your Euler Lagrange equation? That is d over d t del l over del x dot minus del l over del x equals zero. So this minus this right so this piece minus that piece is equal to zero so i get m x double dot minus zero because this is zero is equal to zero m y double dot equal zero m z double dot equal zero so we get our uh, newton's equations for a free particle which is uh, what we should expect now imagine if the particle was not free okay let's say it was acted upon by a force okay yeah, let me do it here itself let's say there is a force f so um, let me not invoke um, potential right now let me just work with the generalized forces so my generalized force q x would be fi dot remember what that would be delta r over delta x okay remember fi dot delta r over delta qi now qi is x here and i should sum over all the particles but there is only one particle so this is what it is and what is this f dot delta r over delta x so what is your r r vector r is the position vector right so this component of it is x so delta x over x is the unit vector in x direction so it's let's say x hat which is f x is it clear so delta so let's say r is x y z right 
So if I take the derivative of r with respect to x, okay, this is what you are going to get. You are going to get 1, 0, 0. So that's what I'm doing. I'm dotting the f with 1, 0, 0 and I get fx. Similarly, your qy would be fy and your qz would be f of z. Okay. Now you see um, the equations of motion in this case would be, remember your equation of motion when the, you write in terms of generalized forces does not have Lagrangian on the left but has um, T on the left, okay. The derivatives of T with respect to uh, the Q and Q dot. So your D over DT of delta T over delta Q dot minus D over DT, sorry. DT over del Q is Q and I should write alpha, right? D remember this? So from here you get easily MX double dot, right? This, this will give you MX double dot, the left hand side which we saw above and the generalized force is the X component, okay? Or if you combine all the three equations right, and write them in the vector form, you get Okay, which is your um, expected Newton's second law. That is, um, okay, that's good. Maybe I'll take up uh, two more examples in the next video and we'll, we'll stop here. Let me see if I want to say anything else. Yeah, maybe I can uh, make that comment here itself. Let's go to this place. This um, thus all Lagrange equation. Now you see this is uh, very nice. Imagine you have a set of particles. Okay, let's say your system is isolated from everything else, and there are a number of particles in there, and they are interacting with each other with whatever interacting forces they have. Okay, whatever constraints are there. Now to know what or how the system is going to evolve with time, okay, you don't need to track, uh, you don't need to know all the forces that are acting on each particle, okay. That's what you uh, would have used if you were doing, uh, using Newton's equations. But here you don't have to. What here you have to do is, you have to know a quantity L, the Lagrangian, which knows about the entire system, okay. L is for the system. So once you know the L, you can derive the equations of motion and you can uh, describe the trajectory um, with time. So L is a piece, uh, is a very central, very important part of um, uh, the subject. And you are always after finding the L. In fact, later you will see that um, when you start doing, um, let's say, um, looking at the fundamental forces, and try to make quantum theory of uh, a nature, you start trying to guess what the Lagrangian could be, okay, from whatever data is available to you, you start guessing it, you start make certain assumptions that the Lagrangian has to be this form, okay, and there are, uh, you, you impose certain symmetries that you know. You remember we have already talked about this, uh, some symmetries in the very first video, first or second, I don't remember, and that put constraints on what kind of uh, what, what could be the nature of forces, okay? So similar constraints you can apply on the Lagrangian itself, okay? And that's what uh, uh, the strategy is when people are um, working in, for example, high energy physics. Anyhow, uh, that's all for now and we'll uh, take a few more examples in the, in the next video. See you, bye.